We are studying about possessions, the things that we, uh, God allows us to have in this life. Everything that we have belongs to God. I don't care what it is. Uh, God made us. God made the heavens and the earth. Uh, God made everything that's on the earth, uh, including you and me. Um, God made us uh, subjects that are is to worship him. We're the only uh, creature uh, in creation that God wants us uh, to worship him because he made us in his image. And because of that, we glorify God. We give him our honor and our glory. God made us like him because we can reason, we can think. Um, we know how to overcome the elements. See, we come into this building this morning, we don't have to deal with the heat because God gave us a mind uh, and, and give us inventions that takes care of the condition that is in this building. Uh, God has given us everything that we need and we got to recognize that. Uh, but a lot of people think that because of their status in life or their social status wherever they are in life, they think it's what they do that makes them what they are. But it's not. God gives us everything that we have. God has given us or given us the ability to get it. Uh, and without that, uh, then we, would, we wouldn't have what we got. It is because God is who he is is because we are what we are because God made us this way. Uh, and we thank God for that this morning. Uh, we're going to be talking about possessions, transformed in our possessions. God loves a cheerful, a cheerful, cheerful giver. <laughs> cheerful. Boy, that's hard to say. Ain't it? God loves somebody that gives. God loves us uh, because God is a giver. And God wants us to be like him. It's better to give than to receive. And we say this many times. I'd rather go visit somebody in a hospital than for them to come visit me. Better to give than to receive, so do it while you can uh, so that you could glorify God. Uh, and so uh, God loves that. God loves us to be a giver. And the more that you learn how to give and the more that uh, you expound yourself, the more God gives you. If you are a giver, God will give you the ability to get. Uh, and so the more you get, the more you can give. And, if, and, you know, and, and so, and, and that's how God works. God owns everything, and God wants to give it to us. But God also wants us to be givers uh, and to help one another. Uh, in our session, over on page uh, 38, it's in Matthew 6, 19 through 20. Uh, possessions don't last. Your relationship with God does. Anything that you have in this earth. There's nothing wrong with money, right? Nothing wrong with money. But there is something that hap that's wrong with us. Money, there's nothing wrong with money. There's nothing wrong with having a lot of money. But it's what money does to you that makes money wrong. Uh, and it, 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 we are the problem. Money ain't the problem. We are a problem. Uh, and so people like to heap up possessions on themselves. Uh, and the more they have in the world, the more you have, the more higher you are up on the social status. Uh, you know, if you, if you make thousands compared to the person that makes millions, uh, the person that makes million is higher up on the social status than you are because he owns more than you. He has more possessions than you. He can have bigger toys than you. Uh, and he can have more power over you because he has money. Uh, uh, but with God, it's not like that. The person that is humble and that is uh, lowly with God is up on the totem pole rather than the guy that is proud. God hates a proud heart. Uh, and so God wants us to be humble. Nothing wrong with having possessions if you use them to the glory of God. Um, and so let's look at, uh, uh, before we get started, turn your Bibles over to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. It's right after Proverbs. And let's, let's read this. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. And 
And look at verse uh, 13, 513, Ecclesiastes 513. I don't know what that thumping is. Uh, but it says, there is a sore evil which I have seen under the sun, namely riches kept for the owners thereof to their hurt. In other words, somebody that's heaping up riches to themselves. And he says, but those riches perish by evil travail. And he begetteth a son, and there is nothing in his hand. In other words, he's going to be poor. And he says, uh, as he came forth of his mother's womb, naked shall he return to go as he came, and shall take nothing of his labor which he may carry away uh, in his hand. And there, and look at this, this is what I want to read to you. And there also is a sore evil that in all points as he came, so shall he go. I want to move this. And uh, shall he go, and what profit hath he that hath labored for the wind? All his days also he eateth in darkness, or he eateth in ignorance, that he does not know that what he has got, God has given to him. So he eateth in darkness, and he hath much sorrow and wrath with his sickness. And that's what riches does to you when you um, uh, heap it up on yourself. And in, in, in verse 2 and 6, you've jumped over 2, it says, A man to whom God hath given riches, wealth, and honor, so that he wanteth nothing for his soul of all that he desireth. Yet God giveth him not power to eat thereof, but a stranger eateth it. This is vanity, and it is an evil disease. And that's the man that gets riches the wrong way. A man that uh, tries to heap upon himself the riches and, of this world, and, and he works for his whatever he gets to where he can uh, be proud or, or, or uh, you know, stand above somebody else, and, 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 and he works all his life. But yet when it comes down to the end of his life, he passes just like any other man or any other woman. Uh, and it's the same because death comes to all men alike. Uh, and so let's look at uh, Matthew 6, 19 through 21. And it says, it tells us to lay not, our, uh, lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust doeth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. It's the desire of your heart. Whatever you work for or whatever you strive in this earth to possess is your heart. It's your will. And God does not want our will to be attached or hooked to earthly things. Uh, the things that we can possess that God has given the ability, given us the ability to obtain anyway. Uh, he's given you the knowledge or the wisdom uh, to, to have a job and to work, and he's given you good health to where you could have a job and you can work and you could possess. Uh, and, but God does not want that to be our sole purpose in this life. There's more to life than heaping up possessions. Uh, God wants us to use what he has given us. There's nothing wrong with getting if you know how to use it. Uh, and God wants you to use it to his glory. Uh, and a, a lot of people think, well, a, a rich man can't go to heaven. Yes, a rich man can go to heaven. Uh, Solomon was a rich man. David was a rich man. Uh, uh, so a rich man can go to heaven. But it's a man that who heaps riches upon himself, he steals and he cheats and, you know, he, he gets it the wrong way to heap it up on himself. And any way that he can get it, he gets it. Uh, and he uses it for his own glory rather than giving God the thanks. Uh, and so that's the man uh, that is in trouble with his possessions. Uh, but God, God wants a rich man. Uh, if you have much, you can give much. Uh, if you have little, God wants you to give a little. It doesn't matter where you stand. God is no, uh, he, he is no respecter of persons. Uh, God does, if you have a little, God don't want you to give a lot. And, and because it's proportional to what, what God has given you. Uh, if God, and it's the same way spiritually. If God gives you a lot of spiritual gifts, God wants you to give, and God wants you to work, and God wants you to use your ability. Uh, but if you, if you have little, then God wants you to give a little. And, and, but God wants you to be a giver. 
any, any way that wherever you fall in life, that's what God wants you to do. Uh, the world that God has given us, there's no limit to what you can have. Uh, every single one of us in our life, we've worked, we've had a job. Uh, a lot of it, we, most of us are retired. And, and that's, that's where you was in life. That's your portion of life. That's where you stopped at. But could I have been, if I was to go back and if I was 19 again, could I be something different than I was? Yes. But it's, it, it has to be a desire of your heart from then. Uh, it would be harder now for me, say I wanted to be a doctor right now. I'm 65 years old. I want to be a doctor. Could I be a doctor? Yes. What would I have to do to be a doctor? I would have to go back to school, and I would have to start studying. Would I have enough time in life? Because I think it took my brother-in-law like 14 years to get his doctorate degree. Uh, to be a, be a, he's a urologist. Uh, it takes a long time. Would I be living in 14 years? Don't know. It'd be a chance, but I could do it if I wanted to, if I set my mind to it. And so can you. But we have stopped in life. Our portion, we have stopped. And, that, and we, ha, we are where we are because of uh, uh, the choices that we made several years ago. And, and, and that's what we are. But the, the world, there's no limit of what a person can possess here in America. That's why everybody wants to get in America. That's why all these other countries, these people want to come into our country because of, uh, of, of what they could get here, what, what it stands for. Uh, and they don't take half of what you, what you make or most of what you make. Uh, and so, uh, but, but, but we can do anything we want to do. But God wants us to do it in his glory. God wants us to glorify him with it and not heap it up on ourselves and say, well, I'm better than uh, Troy because, you know, I went to school longer than Troy. I had a better job in Troy or Bob or, you know, and you could brag about what you've done. God don't want us to be like that. God wants us to be humble and God wants us to, whatever portion you have in life, God wants you to share it. And God wants you to be, a, be, be that giver that, that is cheerful. And, 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 to, and to help other people. God gives so that we can give. And he wants us to possess so that we can share. And, and, and that's the way God is. And, and I heard a preacher preach one time, the only thing you're going to have in heaven with you is what you have given away to the glory of God. And that's going to be in heaven with you. But anything that you heap up on yourself in pride is going to stand against you in a day of judgment. That's, that's that sore evil that that evil man has worked for all the days of his life, and he worked in darkness. In other words, he worked in his ignorance, and he never gave God the glory. Uh, and he was not aware of God's design, how God made us, and, and, and what he wants to do with that. Uh, that's that first paragraph, second paragraph in that, and it says, uh, he's talking about possession, this guy that's uh, writing this. He says, we all have things we treasure, things we value highly. My wife often asks me, how many more fishing lures, uh, how many fishing lures one man can possibly need? And my joke in response is just one more. You can't have enough fishing lures. Uh, you know, uh, the kids today is like that with phones. You know, you, you, you buy, say you buy an iPod or you buy a Verizon phone or something or an Apple. And you buy this thing, and six months later, something else comes out. Better than what you just bought. Now that thing that you bought six months ago is obsolete. And, <laughs> and they keep wanting these things. I mean, it, you know, this is better than that. Oh, my God, look what this phone does. And, and, and they keep wanting them. And, 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 and they keep getting higher and higher in price. You look at some of them phones, when they first come out, and they're like 450 bucks. Who would pay 450 bucks for a phone? But they do. And then they put it on a payment plan of $25 a month. And you pay on that phone the whole time you got that phone for the four-year contract or whatever contract you have on it. Uh, and, and, but they want, to, they want all the new stuff. And, 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 and they like to pull it out and show other kids, man, look what I got. <laughs> I got the new one. <laughs> and, and, uh, but that's, a way, that's human nature. And, and, but God does not want us to look at the earth and possess earthly things. Uh, it's, it's like that iPhone. And, and just, they already got a new phone coming out when they, when they introduce that one. They already got one right behind it. And coming out, it's going to be better than that. Uh, you, you buy a new car, and, and it's all shiny and pretty, smells good, and it looks good. And five years later, you won't even wash it. 
you know, because it, it's old. Because the things that we possess on this earth are temporal. And, 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 you know, and if you keep it 10 years, then a rust spot starts coming through it. The rust starts decaying it. And so everything that is on this earth that we possess is temporal. God made it that way. Uh, and because and God does not want us to put our hope in the things that we possess. God wants us to put our hope in him. And, 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 and the plan that he has given us through his son, Jesus Christ, uh, and how that we could have, not only have life and have it abundantly, but that we can have eternal life. But God wants us to enjoy the life that he has given us. And we, we are here for a allotted amount of time. God has given us a lifespan, and God wants us to enjoy the ride. And, and, and you know, but sometimes we get in trouble with ourselves. We start living for ourselves rather than giving God the glory and, and people go astray and, and they start doing the things that they want. And, and, and people get right in their own eyes rather than looking at the things of God. And this is what I'm going to accomplish in this life. Uh, and it, if you accomplish anything, it's because God has given you the ability and he's given you the health to do it. And, and so you need to, we need to glorify him. It says, how does our character on page... Uh, 39, it says, how does our character reflect the truth in Jesus' statement in verse 21, which says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And, and your, the treasure is a desire of your heart. That's a desire. And, and, and we desire things. That's our will. And that's what it means. We want to, in the next section, we want to talk about the eye. If the eye is single, your body is full of light. Uh, and it's your desire or your will, your sincere desire of your heart. That's what prayer is. That's what meditation is. And it's, it's what, you, what you desire. If you desire things that are evil, then your body is full of darkness. But if you desire the things of God, and if it's single, and if you're, and if you're working for something, and if, you, if, you have, if you're single-minded, you can stay on a straight path if you're single-minded. But if you got 40 different thoughts going through your brain and 40 different desires going through your heart and your will, which way are you going to go? You don't know. See, that's why, that's why Jesus used this analogy that if a man builds a house, does he not sit down and think about what he's going to build and the cost of that house before he starts? Yes, because if you say without a print or anything, without any forethought or anything, you say, I'm going to build a house. Well, how big are you going to build a foundation? And then you start building, well, I want, to build, I want to build it with a single roof or I want to build it with a French roof and all these hip roofs that come off of it. You know, you can't change your mind. You've got to know what you're going to do. If you're single-minded, if you have one plan, and if you're going through that, then you can stay on track. But if you're double-minded, James says, if a, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That's an evil thought, evil will. And, and, and so God wants us to be single-minded. And he wants our treasures to be laid up in heaven. In other words, we are always, everything that we do, I don't care what it is, you do it to the glory of God. And you thank God for it. Because this earth belongs to God. He made it. And, and he wants us to use it according to his glory. And God wants us to glorify him with it. And, and, and uh, you know, it's evil today because of humanity and the way that we're going. That's why the world is evil. I mean, this earth, if, if, man would, if everybody would glorify God that's on this earth, this would be a mini heaven. It would be a temporary heaven for, for, a, for a time that we spent here. But because there's evil in it, there's a struggle going on, and, 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 and there's a fight going on, and then it, it, that's why it is the way it is. It's easy a lot of times to glorify myself rather than to glorify God. And see, because of what I've accomplished, look what I've done. And, and, and so, but we need to stay focused on everything that we are and everything that we have. It, it's because of the glory of God. And we need to praise him and thank him for it. Uh, on page 40, it says in Matthew 6, 21, 23, the light of the body is the eye, and that is the truth. Even with, with our eyes, it's an amazing thing. Have you ever seen that documentary on the eye? 
Have you ever seen that? That is the most amazing thing you've ever seen, how the eye is made. And they, and they said there is no way that the eye could just happen. You know, like evolution, that the eye would just happen. There is no way that the eye could just happen. It had to be an intelligent uh, uh, a being that created what the eye is. It is amazing. So the eye is the light. The, the ever, that's why we see images the way we see images, uh, the way that God has made the eye. And now he, that's a physical eye because the physical eye looks at objects. It goes into your brain, and the brain processes it, and you see what you see. And, but it's the light that, get, uh, that, that has to come into the eye before you can see because in darkness you can't see. Because God never gave us an eye that can see in darkness. And so our eyes only work in light. And so that spiritual eye that God is talking about is the same thing. You've got to be single-minded. You've got to be single-willed, your single desire. It's got to be single. Anything that you plan in this life, it's got to be, uh, 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 it, you've got to have a single path getting to it. Otherwise, you get all confused and you get mixed up. If you try to go this way and you think, well, I'm not satisfied with that way, I'm going to go another way. And then your desire starts changing back and forth. And then you get all messed up. Uh, but God wants us to spiritually look at what he has done and his design that he has made humanity and the way that humanity glorifies him through his son, Jesus Christ. God wants us to be single-minded, have a single desire, a single will to glorify him in it. God has done it for us. And let's just trust him. So the eye, of the, the, the light of the body is the eye. Light means wisdom or knowledge. That means you have, you know it. And, and that's what light is. If you are walking in darkness, then you don't know it. But if you're walking in darkness, all you have to do is to apply yourself and you can learn anything you want to learn. You don't have to be in the dark. You remember when Ford's had that advertisement, they said they have a better idea than to turn that light bulb on? That's what we do sometimes. You can, you can be working on something and be all confused, and you're trying to, to reason out whatever problem it is. And all of a sudden, there it is right before it's like a light bulb come on. Well, that's what's wrong with this. And you fix it. And that's what it's talking about. You... The, the light is the knowledge and the wisdom that you know how to receive the knowledge and then you know how to make it work for you. That's the light. Uh, people that walk in darkness, then they don't know how to make it work. They can receive knowledge. They can ever read the word of God. The Bible says they're ever learning, but they never come to the knowledge of the truth. They don't know how to make it work. See, you can receive knowledge, 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 but knowledge does not get, it, it only helps you. All the, I read the word of God, and it's knowledge. It's God's knowledge, and it helps me. But if I don't know how to use it to help you, then it's just helping me. Knowledge is nothing unless it's being used, and, 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 and that's what God wants us to do. God wants us to, uh, uh, to use what he has given us, and we need to give it away. And, and, and so that's what that light is. You don't have to walk in darkness. He says, but if thy eye be evil, the whole body is full of darkness or it's full of ignorance. That's what it means. If your body is, if, is, if your eye is evil or your desire is evil, then your whole body is full of darkness. If there, and, and therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, then oh, how great is that darkness. Meaning this, if you are living in your knowledge, and, and things that you have obtained, man's wisdom, if you're living in that, and that's your light, and it's ignorance. Can man get caught up in ignorance? Yes, he can. So if you think you're living in a certain way, and it's darkness, then oh, how great is that darkness. Okay, and that's what I said. You take up somebody that's of a different uh, uh, way of worship, you take a, a Catholic or a, a Mormon or you take a Jehovah Witness and you take a Baptist and you try to convert one of them to the other. How hard is it? Is it hard to convert a Catholic to a Baptist or a Jehovah Witness to a Baptist? You better believe it. 
See, so the light that is in you, if it be darkness, then oh, how great is that darkness. That's why it's so important to learn and receive the knowledge that comes from God and not man because you can receive ignorance and you could receive darkness and then you could get into that way and you're thinking, well, you know, this is the way. And no, it's not. You think all missionary Baptists is living the right way? No, there's some living in ignorance. They, the, the, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the way thereof is death. And they don't, they don't have what it takes because they've not trusted in God. And they're not looking. That desire of their heart is not to please God. And, 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 and they just do what they do just to be doing it. And they're right in their own eyes. And, uh, and Ecclesiastes, or Proverbs tells us that. There is a generation that is right in their own eyes. And, and they seek the things that they want. Uh, and so we need to make sure that the light in us is the light of the gospel. And, 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 and it's the true light. Um, look at, turn your Bibles over to, uh, wait a minute, I got another one in, in Ecclesiastes 6, 9. You're right there at 6, 9. Look, look, look at uh, uh, 6, 9. It says, better is the sight of the eyes than the wondering of the desire. And that's what he's talking about. This is also vanity and vexation of the spirit. In 6.9, in Ecclesiastes, it says, better is the sight of the eye or the light or the wisdom of God than the wandering of a desire. The, the, and the desire is the things that you, it's your will. It's what you're seeking. I've laid your treasures up in heaven rather than on the earth. And, and, and so, and, and, and it's talk about the desire of the eye. That's the light of the eye. Whatever you desire in this life is what you're going to do. And when your brain processes it, uh, when you want a drink of water, your brain tells you to go get a drink of water. And you act on because you want a drink of water. But your brain told you, hey, your body needs water. And so now you go get a drink of water or food or anything else. And so the desire of your heart, when it becomes evil, you're, you're processing in your brain the darkness or the ignorance of man and, and your desire is totally off the will of God. And it's darkness to you. And that's a sore evil that is up on this earth. And, the, and Ecclesiastes says it's a vexation of the heart. And it's, it's a sore evil. Uh, now turn over to page uh, 44 or 43, 42 I mean. And let's look at uh, uh, Galatians 6. Turn over to Galatians 6 in the New Testament. <coughs> And let's read verse 4, 3 and 4. In verse 2, he tells us to bear ye one another's burdens and so, so fulfill the law of Christ. The, the, a law is something that is set. Um, and the law of Christ was set by God. God set the law of Christ and it cannot be changed. And, and so this is what he's saying. The law of Christ is this. He was born of a woman, and he died on the cross. God resurrected him the third and appointed day. That's the law of Christ. No man can change that. And so, so he says this, for if, a man, uh, for if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he only deceives himself. See, this is the desire of a man's heart. This is that light that is in you. If, if the light in you be darkness, then oh, how great is that darkness. And it says... But let every man prove his own work. You prove what you are. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden, uh, the, your own convictions of this life, your own desires. Uh, if, you, if you're lucky enough to have a rich parent or a rich uncle, and they, they, uh, they, uh, they give you some of their possessions when they pass away, you inherited it, uh, and it's given to you for free. But otherwise, you're going to work for everything you got or you ain't going to have nothing. Um, and, and, and so God gives you the desire of your heart and God wants you to have that. 
But you got to bear your own burden, your own desires of your own heart. You got to prove your own works. And then you could be proud, not, not pride, but you could be proud of what God has allowed you to do while you live on this earth. A man that enjoys the bread of his labor and, and, and he enjoys it, and, and it's joy to his heart. This is something that is a gift of God and that God let you satisfy, let you be satisfied with what you have and content with what you have. And that's what Paul said. Paul said, whatever state I'm in, I'm going to be content. That's what God wants you to be. He wants you and me to be content with what we have and what he has given us. And if you read down to uh, verse 8, it says this. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And this is um, uh, something that we that desire of your heart. If your desire is selfish, then you're going to do things that makes the flesh happy. But if you are, are humble-minded... And if you have a heart for God and if you have a heart for people, then you can live a life that is pleasing to God and you live according to the Spirit. Uh, when, you, when we visit somebody and when you go and, 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 and you lift them up, see, you're going to visit a person in the flesh, but that person also has an eternal spirit that you went to visit. And see, and you go visit a friend of yours and, and, and you picked up their spirit and that's why Jesus said, if, 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 if you visited me when I was in prison, you fed me when I was hungry and you clothed me when I was naked. And he said, well, well, when did I do all these things? He said, because you went to visit the brother and when you, you visited him and you lifted him up, you went to see him in the flesh, but you picked up his spirit that belongs to me. You did it to him, you also did it to me. And that's what you and that, and that and that's what God gives you credit for and gives me credit for. And and so if you sow to the flesh, if you go to get get a notch in your belt in the flesh, then you're going to reap corruption. It's going to benefit you nothing. But if you do it in the spirit, he said you shall reap everlasting life. And that's what God wants to give us and that's what he has done through his son Jesus Christ. Now look at this. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold on to the one and despise the other, and you cannot serve God in mammon. See, money is not the problem. Humanity is the problem. See, humanity cannot serve God and your possessions or your money, whatever it is. I mean, some people could serve a collection of old cars, and that's, that's their sole desire is to collect old cars, and, and, and a lot of people do. And they can never get enough of them. Like the, the guy that re read this story, he says, how many lures do you need? I just need one more. Well, if a guy's collecting old cars, how many old cars do you need? Just one more. The one that I find that I want to buy and, and put it in my collection. Uh, so you never get enough, no, never enough. But when it comes down for him to pass, guess what? All them old cars is going to be left behind. And somebody's going to be, if he ain't got them wheeled out to where they need to go, guess what? They're going to be fighting over them. And it's going to be a mess. And, and, and most of the time, that's the way our possession is in this life. I've seen families broken apart because they think that their brother or sister got a little bit more than they did. And, and I've told this story before. My friend, uh, it, his uh, uh, in-laws passed away. Uh, they tallied up the farm that they had. Well, the one sister didn't like what she got, so she contested it. So that's in, they lived in West Virginia, okay, uh, they live up here, so every time a court thing come, they had to load up, go to West Virginia, go to court. Two years, this thing lingered on in court. And guess what happened? That which will is will cannot be contested. Everybody got what they was lighted, and they spent all that money for the lawyer. Who made out? The lawyer. The lawyer made out. So, and that's, that's the way it goes. We won't... We, we are selfish. I want a little bit more. I didn't get enough. And, and, and we don't need to be like that. Uh, and, and, that's, it, and, and, and sometimes even though they leave a will, they still contest it. But uh, 
I like the, I like the way uh, my pastor of the other church, when his dad died, his dad wrote a will. It was him and his sister, and he lotted all the things out that uh, divided it up between them, and it said if either one of these contestant, they get a dollar. That was the last statement of his will. If anyone contests what I have done, they get a dollar, and the other one gets gets what the other one had. And guess what? And he said, when we went in there, when that lawyer read that, we walked out. I love you, sister. That's the way it goes. That was a good thing to do. And, and that way it can't be contested. Uh, and we know that today. I mean, you see contracts written all over everywhere today. And if, and if the lawyers can get you out of that contract, they get it out. Words don't mean what they used to mean. And, and, and so people says one thing, but they mean something else. And, but God wants us to be single-minded, single-hearted, have a single desire and a single will. Not only are we to please God, but we are to bear each other's burdens. We are to help one another, and that's why God put us here. See, we can't see God, and we don't know God the way we know each other. I mean, we think well, the only way you know God is by faith. It's the allotted faith that you have to make you believe in who God is. But we have each other. And God wants us to help each other, and God wants us to love each other. Because you know what that is? That's a direct parallel relationship uh, between you and God, how you love your brothers and sisters. That shows your relationship with God. Because if you can't love man whom you see, you certainly ain't going to love God whom you can't see. And the Bible tells us that. So the Bible wants us to use the love that God has given us to love one another. And love suffers no ill to his neighbor. And that's the true love. That's that agape love. Uh, and so he says, when have you felt the tension of trying to serve two masters? We all try to serve. I, that conflict is in all of us. You can't help it. Um, see, the, the, you hear preachers preaching on this. The mammoth represents money. But the money ain't the problem. Money is no problem, folks. The problem is how you relate to money. The love of money is the root of all evil. Money is not evil. Uh, there is nothing wrong with drugs. There's nothing wrong with alcohol. It's the people that take it. See, you, that, that meth labs they got all over the place. There's nothing wrong with it. If everybody was single-minded and worship God, guess what? They'd have to go away because nobody would want it. They, they wouldn't take it. Same way with with whiskey and beer and everything else that's evil in this world. It's not, the, it's not the, 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 the stuff that's evil. It's the person and the thought that they have, that they got to have it, and they got to try it. And so they go out and they try it, and they get hooked on it. The problem is not with what they got hooked on. The problem is with them. And so if you get your heart straightened up, I've seen drug addicts get saved and get off of it. Doesn't mean anything to them. I see the alcoholics get saved, get off of it. Doesn't mean anything. And, and because they have a change of heart. They have a change of the way they look at things. And that's what's important. And, and God changes hearts. And when God changes your heart, then the stuff that you used to do all of a sudden now doesn't mean anything. And, and God changes your desire. And you go from that fleshly thought, of, thought, uh, thought wave in your brain to a spiritual thought wave in your brain. And you look at things the way God wants you to look at them rather than looking at things that are temporal. And we look at things that are eternal rather than the things that are temporal. And you cannot serve two masters. You can't. Turn over to Romans 6. Romans 6, 6 says this. I'm going to read a couple of verses right here, and then I'm going to jump over to 16. It says, Knowing this, that our old man, which is the flesh, is crucified with him, that is Christ, that the body of sin might be destroyed. See, the body of sin has to be destroyed. What's the body of sin? It's, it's, the, it's the thought and desire of your flesh. That body of sin might be destroyed, and henceforth you should not serve sin. For he that is dead, how are you dead? The old man is crucified with him. Okay? For he is dead, he that is dead is freed from sin. Now look at verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, 
whether it is sin unto death or it is obedience unto righteousness. And obedience is the highest form of worship to God. And when you want to serve sin, you don't obey. See, you choose. See, the tree of knowledge of good and evil is you choose good and evil. You choose. You're in control. Your works is in control. You do it. I want to choose uh, to go to church on Sunday. You choose good. But then you choose to sin on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. That's, that's a choice. It's not obedience. Obedience is that God has made everything, and it is good, and it is perfect, and all you got to do is obey him. That's all God wants you to do. God has made it, and all we got to be is obedient to what he has set up. And when we do, that is the highest form of worship because you're obedience unto righteousness. And that's making your faith work. See, righteousness uh, is the end product of faith. You have faith that works righteousness. See, you don't, God gives you faith, but the faith has to work. If faith don't work, then it's vain faith. In other words, when God gives you a portion of faith, that faith has to become to bear fruit. The end of any faith is the fruit that it bears. And so then it produces more fruit and more seeds, and you can plant more seeds. That's the seed of faith. And so when, when faith works, when you believe God, see, you have a longevity faith. I, God gave me enough faith when I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior to believe I'm going to heaven. But that's, I, I, that's not become sight yet. It's a working faith. And I won't know that until this body passes away. And then my faith is going to become sight. See, faith has to become sight. And you've got to know that. It's, a, it, it's, it's, it's proportional to the things that you do. See, you, you can't hang on to faith, 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 faith. No, faith has to work. If faith don't work, then it don't bear no fruit. See, and that's what Paul said. Paul said, you, you know, I will show you my faith by my works. And it's what you do and how you handle problems and how you come out of situations that you, your faith uh, uh, is seen by men. You know, I can tell you I have faith, but if you can't see the fruit of my faith, my faith is vain. And there is a such thing as vain faith, faith that's no good. And, and, and so, but the faith that God gives you is a continuing process of, of life that bears fruit. And that's where he purges us that will bear more fruit. And we, we cannot, you know, serve sin and serve God, and we cannot be obedient unto death and then be obedient unto righteousness at the same time because we, we bear the image of the earthy, but we also bear the image of the heavenly. And that's why the old man has to be crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed because we are the body of Christ. God has to take the body of sin and translate us into the kingdom of his dear son, which is the body of Christ. And the body of sin and the body of Christ does not mix. And, and they're totally different from one another, and they're contrite to one another. And they, 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 they are all time struggling inside of you. And so that's why you got to be crucified with him. If you, if you, are, if you think that you could never get out of sin, then by faith you will never get out of sin. Did you know that? But if you believe that you're in righteousness and that you can live blameless before God, then by faith you can live that righteous life. It's by faith. And, 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 and you are what you believe. And, 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 and that's why he said, he that is dead, reckon yourself dead indeed unto sin. Believe it with all your heart that sin does not reign in my mortal bodies in that sixth chapter of Romans. And, and, and that's what God wants us to have the mindset of. But if you have the mindset that you are a sinner, then by faith you're going to be a sinner, and you can't help it. And, 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 but but, but you've got to believe in your heart that you're not going to serve God and mammon. I'm going to kill the mammon, and I am going to serve my living God. I'm going to worship him, and him only will I worship inside of yourself. And you've got to hang on to that, and you've got to be single-eyed. Let your eye be single. That's the desire of your heart, and that's the road that you're going to take in this life, that I am going to try, and I'm going to try and try to trust God in what he has given me and allowed me to have. And I'm going to trust him with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. And everything that God made is perfect, 
and everything that God has done, God has done for our glory, and all God wants us to do is to give him back what he has given us. That's all he wants. And, and to glorify him in it. And when we do that, then we glorify our living God. And we worship him in spirit and in truth. And, that, and God seek us such to worship him. See, we can't serve God with what's sitting in that pew. I can't serve God with what's standing here before you. I serve God with the inner part of me that you can't see. That's how I worship God and that's how I serve God. My old body, Satan tries to use to tear me down. He tries to put sin in it and he tries to mar what God has started in me. See, God started in me the, the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the mark of his son, Jesus Christ. And I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of my faith and I trust what God has done. And through him, I trust. See, I'm not going to heaven because of me. I'm going to heaven because of what Christ did for me. Because he is in me and I am part of his body. I am part of his members. And it is because of what God has done through him that I have access to the kingdom of his dear son. And I glorify God with that. And whatever God allows me to do on this earth, I'm going to praise God with it. Whatever it is, I'm going to glorify him and, 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 and praise, praise the Lord and glory to his name. Any comments? Let's dismiss. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this wonderful day that you have given us. And, and Father, we ask.